computer. There we go. Uh, so I'll record the lectures and uh, put them on YouTube. So I'll uh, after today, there'll be a link here. It says YouTube right here. Uh, there will be a link to the playlist where I'll put all the lectures. So if you can't zoom in, can't make it to class, you can still watch the uh, lecture video. I recommend changing the rate at which it plays back so that you can watch like a two hour lecture in like an hour and a half, just from changing the speed at which the video plays. So office hours, uh, hit me up anytime um, after class, during class. If you need to make an appointment, you can. Um, if it's an emergency, y'all, y'all have my number. Uh, it's in the email. Since there's only ten of y'all, I can really give give y'all some attention, you know. But um, before you ask me directly, make sure you utilize your tutoring. So it says, please see the home page for free tutoring. So there is a physical tutoring center on campus that's open almost all the time, and you can. Uh, do it through Zoom as well. So before you hit me up with a basic math question, try to utilize these uh, these uh, resources here. And there's an infinite number of websites that you can use as well to help you uh, comprehend this, this math stuff. Uh, when I'm not teaching, uh, I'm scrubbing toilets at a hotel as a housekeeper for $10 an hour. So. <laughs> I might not be able to answer the phone all the time. Let's see, back to the syllabus. All right, Alex. Alex is uh, like an online digital textbook with online homework. Um, so again, at the home page, it tells you all about Alex. Um, you all paid for it with your tuition, from what I understand. So this is where you go to register. Um, to figure out how to register in Alex for the semester. So again, this is where the digital textbook is and you'll have homework problems you can do in here. My goal is to figure out how to pair it with the grade system in Canvas here. So grading uh, this the Alex homework, I'm gonna do like 15%. Lab is 5%, so, um, I should update this here, but uh, I think here in the home, it tells about the lab. Let me see. Required lab minutes. Yeah. They want you to complete 800 minutes in the math lab, which is the tutoring lab, or basically they want you to spend 800 minutes doing tutoring uh, this semester. And I guess when you clock in or log into the lab, they'll they'll have a report that tells me how much time you've spent. Okay. But again, that's being in the lab is only 5% of your grade. Okay. So if you're like, I'm fine without being in the lab, you only lose 5%, you know. Uh, but take advantage of the labs, spend time there until y'all can get this material mastered. So a lot of teachers, they have, um, you know, like uh, three big tests and then a final exam, right? I don't do that um, because I don't like it that people get behind and then they cram and all that. So what I do is I do, every day I do a quiz and I do an exam at the end of class. And there's only two problems in the quiz, two problems in the exam. That's how I like to do it. Uh, so you, you're never going to have a big exam coming up except for the final exam in here. OK, you're going to get a little test every day because that's the way the real world is. We work on one big problem at a time. You know, we don't get faced with here's 45 problems. Do them as fast as we, you can. That's not really real world, you know, so it's a lot easier to manage. OK. Um, so there's going to be around 30 quizzes, 30 exams, because that's how many classes we have. I'm going to drop your five lowest quiz grades and your five lowest exam grades. Um, so was, you'll have by the end of every day to get your quiz and your exam done. So you don't have to do it right in the moment. You know, you'll have the whole rest of the day till midnight to finalize your answer and submit it. 
And for these quizzes and exams, there's assignments up here. Uh, you should be able to upload your answers there. The way I recommend you do that is just use pencil and paper to do your math, pull out your cell phone, take a snapshot, and on your phone, there is a Canvas app. I don't know if y'all are aware of that, but if you have a smartphone, you can download Canvas for students. So it should allow you to just take a photo of the math you've done and upload it into Canvas where you submit your answers for assignments. And if you submit something wrong, you can always change it. You can re-upload and replace the file. Uh, so you have until midnight, every class day, you have until midnight to get your quiz and exam in. And if you get behind, uh, if you miss something, um, you can always go back and still do it. You can still do the quiz or exam and but you'll get only half credit okay if you turn it in late and that's because i'll already have the solutions to the exams posted so by the end of the semester none of y'all should have any zeros because even if you missed something or didn't do it you can still look at the solutions that i've posted write down the correct answer and submit that for half credit so the lowest grade you should get on any quiz or exam is a 50 and that's just for totally missing it Okay, so I do that and I drop five exams and quizzes instead of like one or two. I drop five because we're in COVID season, you know. Um, I'm getting over it right now. My whole family had it. It's my second time to have it. It sucks. So at the end of the semester, we'll have a final exam. Uh, it's worth 20% of your grade. Uh, so uh, try to keep up throughout the semester. All right, not just getting the grades, but mastering the material so that you can uh, knock out this final exam. And then here's your calendar, just roughly what we're going to be doing each week. So we might get around to this next time. This time around, today's Tuesday. Yeah, so we still have Thursday to cover that. And we'll stay uh, uh, up to date here. So let's see, how many people do we have? We have eight, so I'm only missing one person. Uh, let me see if they're... Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, do you know what location we're going to be at for our class in San Antonio? They haven't assigned an actual room yet. Um, most of the math classes are located in Juniper Hall because that's where the math lab is and, and everything. But they, and they, this is at Northwest Vista, right? Yeah, at Northwest Vista. Okay, I thought it was like at a whole other Alamo College, which is why I was kind of freaking out. But well, it, it was located in Kerrville uh, at Northwest Vista's satellite campus. There's a little campus there. I didn't know about it either till they gave me this class. But then they found out that most of y'all thought the classroom was in San Antonio, so they just went ahead and changed it to San Antonio. They just haven't found a room for us yet, but I'm sure okay. they will. Thank you. So I'm not sure. Uh, the homework thing, um, there is homework assigned. Uh, for me to go to Alex, I have to go to modules probably where y'all go to and then I click on Alex. So y'all will have the student view here. It'll ask load and a new window. Uh, you'll have to follow the instructions for registering for it first. Again, I showed you that in, where were the instructions? Under home. Yeah, you're gonna wanna go to home. And then here's a, the how to register your Alex. Once you're registered, I think you can go to modules here and load Alex and see this is what it looks like for me. So y'all do have assignments here that you can start working on uh, for this week. Uh, it's 2.1 and 2.2. It's taking forever. See how there's, you can always go to the syllabus and see we're week one so this week you want to finish 
2.1 and 2.2 homework in Alex. Um, I, I, okay, that's the textbook. Uh, yeah, let's see, maybe here. Yeah, 2.1 and 2.2. I gave you a lot of extra time. I have to go through and change all the due dates because all these due dates were based on a Monday, Wednesday class instead of a Tuesday, Thursday. So I'm just gonna add an extra week to every due date they have here. So you have an extra week to finish the homework. Um, then I can synchronize this with the grade book in Canvas. All right. But yeah, in, in Alex, uh, where Alex go. They should have the actual, God dang it, they don't give me much time here. Um, let me try again. Canvas. The actual, like a digital version of the textbook. Do y'all have a physical textbook? Did they give you one? Like a printed copy of the book? Um, I'm pretty sure you can buy one and I think it's like $26. Yes, and I ordered all my stuff so it should be coming in sometime. Okay. See here. I, I got one of my books, but uh, not my math one. Okay. So, yeah, I don't have a physical copy. I was wanted to download it out of this Alex as a PDF, but it won't let me, which is going to slow me down quite a bit, but I could still make this happen. I'm used to having a PDF where I can just copy something out of it and paste it into my journal app here so I could paste a problem in out of the book and then work on it, you know. But the way things are, I'm gonna load the book here. There's the book loading. Dang it, wrong button. Let's try this again. Come on, Alex. You can do it, Alex. There we go. So I can go to section two point one. And y'all can see that, right? So what I want to be able to do is just copy a portion of this and paste it, which I have the ability with this snipping tool, which is a little bit of a hassle. So I can take this and copy that. And then I can paste it into my notes here. You see, and then I can draw on it and write about it. And then this file here, I'll, I'll save and I'll upload this to Canvas. So you have physical copy of all the notes, right? So you don't have to sit there and just try to write down everything I'm writing the whole time. You know, I could be over here, one plus one equals two, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to waste all your focus on just trying to write everything I'm writing because I will post these notes in Canvas for you. So you can just more pay attention and, and follow along unless copying everything down helps you out, okay? So that's kind of how I'll, I'll teach using Zoom. I'll do it the exact same way in the classroom. Um, so that works out. Um, so I think that's a decent intro to the class here. Y'all have any questions about anything so far? All right, so what we're learning uh, here, we're starting off with simply adding numbers. So we're starting with the very basics. Um, I guess before we get into the math, I should tell you a little bit about myself. Um, let's see, I graduated high school in 1996 for, in Bandera. I'm not sure if any of y'all know the town Bandera, it's just a small town. I went to UTSA because it was the closest college to my house. And I majored in computer science because it seemed like there were a lot of jobs there. And I hated it and it was boring and it was really, really hard. Um, what made it even harder was all the math classes. I'm over there trying to learn how to program and 
you know, a lot of my classmates, they had taken programming classes in high school or their parents were engineers or whatever, you know, like my dad hung sheetrock and then he taught Spanish. Um, so it was hard. And I got my computer science degree in six and a half years, barely, you know, straight C average. And, uh, but I wasn't very good at programming. I wasn't looking forward to getting a job that I sucked at sitting in a cubicle around a bunch of dweebs for the rest of my life. Uh, and so the counselor said, Hey, you've already taken so much math because of computer science. You know, if you just take these, these classes here, you can get a bachelor's degree in math. And I thought, well, that's better than programming, you know? So I did that and I took seven math classes because I thought I could get the degree all at once. I don't know what possessed me. You know, I wasn't any good at math or liked it or anything. But that semester, mathematics basically fell in love with me. I'd slowly taken so much of it that it finally clicked. And I saw it as a language, you know, as an art. And uh, uh, from then on, I was hooked. You know, I was about 25 years old. And uh, so I got my bachelor's and then I stayed for my master's and there's no PhD program in math at UTSA. So I, I didn't want to go work works. I liked hanging out on college and, you know, on campus campus was cool. You know, get to talk to smart people and see beautiful women everywhere. I definitely didn't want to go to the Silicon Valley where there's like seven dudes per chick, you know? So I just started taking any math class I hadn't taken and I took physics classes because it could do math and just waited for a PhD program to come, which never happened. But they did start a PhD program in physics. They, uh, power, they uh, combined forces with Southwest Research Institute and started a space physics PhD program. So I went into that, but I was more interested in cosmology, like black holes and all that stuff, you know, the beginning and the end of everything in the universe. And it, it was really interesting. And uh, I almost made it. But along the way, uh, I created a, a charity, an educational charity uh, to create free, informal math and science education content for the world, basically getting people in the world to create their own examples and problems and then sharing that with the rest of the world. So I was teaching math full-time at UTSA and I was a full-time theoretical physics student and I was building this corporation and I was trying to get my wife's citizenship and I was on Adderall. And once all this piled up on me after, I don't know, two, three years of taking it as prescribed, I started abusing it and it was not good. I burned out. Um, it just nervous breakdown, divorce. Uh, I pushed for like two years through the addiction and I finally just gave up. I quit teaching. I dropped out of school. So I got a, a master's in physics, not a PhD and a master's in math and bachelor's of computer science but that doesn't really help you much when you're addicted to amphetamines so I just dropped out of society I thought I could like get well you know I just needed some time to get well well without income and being away from campus and all the people I just lost my mind um, I couldn't function uh, I barely could refer to myself in third person like the, the psychiatrist gave me meds to try to help me get off the meds and they just blew my mind, you know? It put me in a dissociative state where you lose the concept of self itself. Um, and from there, I found myself addicted to methamphetamines and spent several years in pure, absolute hell. Finally got busted and put on probation. Part of probation was uh, uh, a treatment program. I was like, great, I'm finally getting treatment. Well, they didn't tell me the treatment program was located in prison as part of my probation. You know, they said it's six months, but first you have to sit and wait in jail for a bed to open for three months. Then you get there and they say, no, it's not six months. Since you had depression, it's nine months. So then you're in straight up prison, but 
with counseling, which just made it even worse for nine months. After that, you go to a halfway house. But once the nine months is up, you don't just go to the halfway house. They say, no, wait, now you have to wait for a bed to open in the halfway house. And so you can wait for another three months in prison. So it's free three months of incarceration. So it turned out to basically be uh, a year and a half of incarceration. That's their concept of a treatment program. But I finally got out of that and kept my, you know, stayed sober. And it's been five years. And last Wednesday, I finally got off of probation. Uh, and I'm finally free again. Um, I've been, I got my teaching job back. Uh, Northwest Vista gave me a second chance. Um, because they really liked me 10 years ago when I used to teach uh, for them. Um, so I'm back and it's my second year back and it's really nice to have the privilege of being able to teach y'all. So um, when, when, when I was in that treatment program, what really revived me was the opportunity to teach. They had a GED program in there and a lot of my I call them classmates, but we were, you know, offenders is what they call this. Offender, offender, they just yell at us all the time, um, needed help getting their GED. So I found myself the whole time after like eight years of being away from math and just being lost in drugs, I, I got to teach math to people of all kinds of backgrounds, um, different, you know, experience levels. Uh, it was just an amazing experience which really helped because that place sucked a lot. It's, it's a big metal building with like 80 people in it and there's no air conditioning and it's like 120 degrees and there's rats everywhere, cockroaches everywhere. The guards, all they wanna do is try to humiliate you and make you mad so they can write you up and give you the maximum prison sentence, which for me would have been 50 years. So amongst the torture, you know, I got to teach math, which was, you know, very, it's a great reawakening, you know. Uh, so, you know, however hard life gets, you know, sometimes you might feel like just like giving up, just keep trying, you know, just don't give up, you know, do your best each day. Some days our best isn't very good, but just make it till tomorrow, you know. Oh. And uh, you'd be surprised what you can uh, succeed at, you know, this math. I know a lot of y'all hate math. It just seems hard, but basically it's just, you don't like it because you don't like it. Anything you do like, you're good at, and you're only good at it because you did it a lot, you know? So my goal in this class isn't to push math down your throat, but cure the reason why you don't already have it mastered. That's because it hasn't inspired you. You know, you haven't acquired a taste for it. So just like drinking beer, Beer tastes like crap, but you keep drinking it because eventually you'll get a buzz off of it, you know? So it's a matter of acquiring a taste for this. And y'all may say math is hard. It's really not. Think about something that you're good at in life. Pick anything that you know you're good at. Well, I guarantee you that whatever it is, it's a whole hell of a lot harder than this math that we're, we're to learn in this class this semester. You know, if you're good at Fortnite, that's way harder than this. You know, if you're good at drawing, that's way harder than this. This is not that hard. And the goal here is simply to find some inspiration to acquire a taste for it. Uh, you know, I don't have to teach you quantum mechanics. I just wanna get enough math into your mind so that uh, you can apply it practically to the things you need to in your life to achieve your goals. When I went to college my first six years, I'd never, dreamed that I would be a mathematician or a physicist. Those are my least favorite subjects. You know, I was too busy smoking pot and trying to make C's to care about anything at that point in time. But after 15 years of full-time student, um, I still suck at math, but I like it, <laughs> you know? Um, let's see here, Get some water. So let's start off with what is math? So what is math to you? What is math? 
All right. I used to think it was just a bunch of symbols that you manipulated and got a symbol and then you got a grade and then you got to not do math anymore. Okay, well, to really understand what math is, uh, we have to go back to basically conscious thought. Now, we all have thoughts going through our heads, right? Um, those thoughts look like pictures or words or sounds or smells. All right. Well, sure, we have subconscious thought too, but we don't really have access to it. All right. We are aware of our conscious thoughts. So if you think about this, there's a person. We got uh, thoughts in here. Those aren't eyes. These are thoughts. All right. And they say this is sound. This is sight. This is smell. These are the thoughts that we have. Well, uh, the conscious ones are ones that we can send to somebody else, right? They have ears, mouth, and so on, right? Why is it these thoughts that we have, you have a picture in your head. Well, that picture you can always draw and then show somebody else, right? If you have a sound in your head, you can sing it and it'll go through their ears. All right, so think of these thoughts as Legos. You, you build them with these Legos and our conscious thoughts are made out of things that fit into somebody else's sensory inputs. So our mind is producing thoughts, all kinds of thoughts of all shapes and structures. Most of them are subconscious. Only the ones we call conscious are the ones that fit through somebody else's eyes or ears, etc. The thing is, is our mind our brain here, our mind is not limited to the language of our mouth, blah, 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 right? We might think that because, you know, it's like we hear words in our head, right? Oh, and our, what about pictures? Well, our mind is not limited to the language of sight. Our mind is not limited to the language of ears or smell or taste. It's just we've evolved to have what we call conscious thoughts. Those thoughts are the ones that fit through somebody else's sensory inputs. That's why they manifest themselves as conscious thoughts. But mathematics is a language of our mind that allows us to understand things uh, that won't fit through somebody else's eyes or ears, etc. Okay. Um, the vast majority of the things that are going on in the world around you at any given moment, you can't even begin to think about it with words or pictures. You know, the vast majority of the, the universe around you can only be thought of effectively with the language of mathematics. Math is the art of thought. All right. Think about something real simple. Like, why do we have the number nine? Why do we have the number eight? The number so why do we have the even have this symbol? What if we have the number one? Right? There's there's cultures out there. They only have the numbers one, two, and many. Their culture never never found the need to, to create the number three. What if we just have one and plus? Right, we don't need a nine. We could just say one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Right, keep it simple. Why do we need sines and cosines and trigonometry and calculus? Why do we need all this notation notation in this math? Well, to illustrate this point effectively, what if you're uh, let's say uh, uh, let's say you have a a football team. You have nine players. Or let's say you're a general in a, a battle or something and you have nine, nine army men. You know, if you want to have them arranged in a certain way, well, you can't in your head, if you're thinking, okay, all one plus 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 one of y'all line up over here, right? It gets, gets really effective. It's a lot easier to say, hey, all nine of y'all go line up, right? This is a simple example, but it shows the power of mathematics. Without math, there's so much we just can't even think about. There's plenty of things mathematical that we can put into words. And there's some things we can put into words that mathematically 
would be 100 pages of calculations. But there's plenty of calculations that are just three or four symbols that make perfect sense if you know your math. But to put those three or four symbols into words, into English, might be 10 pages long. So this is why you want to learn your math. If you're an undecided major, the most important subject that you could take is math because it's going to help you in every subject and it's going to be the most gratifying uh, tool that you can have. It empowers your mind. It extends the language of your mind beyond the language of your mouth or your eyes or your ears. And it sucks at first because it's hard to see that. But the more you study it, the more you acquire taste, the more you'll start seeing it in the world around you and actually applying it and feeling the actual power of mathematics. So I'm going to try to fill the, our classes with a lot of history and just interesting insights, anything I can to inspire y'all, because for me as a teacher, uh, that's my job, you know. Uh, anybody can pre pre present this material perfectly. It's already in the book, right? You could just read the book. Why am I here? I'm here to entice you to, to try to absorb that material in the limited time that we have. Okay. Sir, um, unlike you, I do love math. Uh, that's like I started having a taste in high school, freshman year for it. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I was too busy wearing solid black and being depressed in high school to uh, <laughs> acquire a taste for it. You know, I just had some maturing to do. I guess that yeah, I, I I was the same. Like I'd be wear a jacket and like half of my body would be be completely goth and the other half would not. <laughs> All right. All right. So um yeah, I'm, I, I don't want to bust y'all's balls this semester. You know what I mean? I want this to be as fun as possible. I know we're in a pandemic. Uh, my little girl, she's one year old. She has uh, COVID. I think she's getting over it. I'm sick with it again. I know there's tons of stuff to try to prevent us from learning this, but uh, hopefully we can make it fun and uh, interesting. If y'all need help with anything, again, you got unlimited tutoring. Uh, you have me, we have plenty of time. Our classes are two and a half hours long. So there's plenty of time to ask questions and, you know, go on wild, interesting tangents if you want. Uh, so let's do uh, a quiz. I want to make sure we all know how to upload our answers to quizzes and such. So here's quiz number one. Uh, Tell me a little about yourself. So you can just write this down on a piece of paper and photograph it and upload that into Canvas. Or if you have another way that you know how to do this, uh, you're welcome to do it that way. Like if you have an iPad or tablet or something if you have another mode of doing it that's fine i just want to make sure that when i grade them that i can actually uh, read whatever files you're uploading if you're uploading a pdf or a jpeg i know i can i can open those files you know try not to send me like a powerpoint or something because my computer is really slow and might not be able to open a powerpoint file all right try to keep it simple so let's take uh, 10 minutes here uh so we'll go to 2.50 to uh, see if we can get everybody to upload their answers here. I'm going to stop the recording. It is inside. Um, let me see here. Uh, it's quiz one. I did. Uh, and it's in like the quizzes or is it like on announcements? And stuff? Quiz one. Um, I'm not sure how it looks on y'all's screen. Give me a second here. I was like trying to get my chat thing. And it just only wants to show me half of my chat. Can y'all see that? My chat window or does it not show that? Uh, let's 
going to be hard to read. Um, yeah, I think y'all should be able to go to assignments. Uh, maybe there's a student view. There we go. Let's see what it looks like for y'all. Yeah, here, here would be quiz number. Okay, three. I think I just submitted it. Um, it should be there. Yeah, let me let me look and see real quick. Speed uh, greater. All right, I have so far three y'all have submitted um, your answers. I have Zoe, Tanya, and Brianna. No, hold on. It's not right. Let's go over here. Okay, I have Zoe, Tanya, and Jonathan so far. Um, again, you should be able to use the Canvas app on your uh, uh, your phone. There is a Canvas app. Uh, See, that's what I was trying to do. Download the app real quick so I can send you a picture of it real quick. If you just give me a second. Yeah, yeah, take your time. Uh, we have plenty of time today. I just want to make sure we all know how to do this. Um, I I just, I went through my, I took a screenshot and through my uh, pager and then I uploaded it to my gallery and then I uh, did it through my uh, Safari. Okay, yeah, that, that'll work, you know. Any, any way that works for you is fine. You know, I'm sure throughout the semester you'll find shortcuts and such. All right, uh, Danielle, uh, you uploaded yours in the exam one instead of the quiz one. Oh, my bad, okay. sorry. You just go ahead and upload it in the quiz one. Uh, later today, I'll give you an exam uh which is just okay. it's just going to be telling me about something you enjoy about math sometime in your life i'll give you that at the end of class uh so you can when you upload that it'll write over the file that you upload hey kitty 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 <laughs> yes this is my kitty norris she's a brat <laughs> nice uh, my dog's name is alex so don't be surprised if he's always jumping in my lap because our software we use is also called Alex. <laughs> he thinks I'm calling him constantly. I, do, I have a dog. My, her name is Bailey. Nice. Yeah, I, I worry because of COVID, dogs don't get COVID, but cats do. See, so cats can catch it and spread it. So you got to be careful with the cats, you know? You got it. So, Did you receive my assignment? Uh, yeah. It's hard to hear you. You're cutting out. I was asking that you receive the assignment. Exam. What, what's your name? I just went on Canvas to exam and then I took a picture of it and then Maisha Jordan. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I just wrote something short to just make sure that I was able to send it. That's fine. You can, uh, if you want, you can always uh, add more to it and upload a new file if you want. If you get bored. All right, so all of them that are uploaded so far, I can read just fine. Yeah, that's good. So we got one, two, three, four, six of y'all have uploaded. So we just have three more people. Make sure everybody is on the same page before we move on. 
Some, somebody couldn't make it to class today and we're missing one other person in class. I think we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, we got 10 of us. Okay. So one person couldn't make it. So yeah, everybody's here. That's good. Oh, there's Fernando. All right. So we're just waiting on Chloe and Jose. So y'all let me know when y'all get y'all's uploaded so I can check and make sure I can uh, open the file. Okay, somebody's asking about the homework. Um, in Alex, uh, this this week you have sections two point one and two point two. Um, you go to the syllabus. Yeah, week one, this week, we're doing section 2.1 and 2.2. So that's the homework for the week, okay? Insert new page. Homework this week. Yeah, you can all, whatever week we're in, you can always look at the syllabus and here under the calendar, you can see the sections that, that will be assigned. And in Alex, you can see the due dates. I'm trying to leave it fairly loose so you have plenty of time. So let's check out our grade book here. And... All right, we're still missing Chloe and Jose. All right, are y'all with me, Chloe? Jose, can y'all say something? Oh, there's Chloe. Yes, sir. Uh, your computer, I could, <laughs> I wish I could show you my chat's window. It only shows the left half of it. So I can't, I can't read <laughs> the right half. But from my, what I could tell your computer is giving you problems. So um, that, that's fine. Um, uh, try to try to get them worked out and get this uploaded. I'm not going to grade these until our next class, you know. Uh, so by our next class, if you still haven't got these technical issues worked out, then uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Okay. So you thank know, you. I appreciate it. You're not going to get punished for having technical difficulties. All right. And then Jose, are you there, Jose? You might just be busy. He's not logged in, is he? Chloe, okay, Tony, Fernando, Brianna. No, he's not with us here. So we have what? How many people? Nine. I only have ten students. Argent, Giovanni isn't here. Maybe he's under a different name. Two, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nine, including me. Okay, so Jose is not here today. All right, that's all right. So we got everybody here. Um, Chloe, you're still working on it. Uh, it's fine. I'll try to get it in by midnight uh, so I can rest it. Yes, sir. Here. And uh, so we'll move on here. So it's three o'clock. We still have an hour and a half. Let's look at a, we'll look at some math here. So we're starting off with the basics, integers. Uh, the integers are, so this is just vocabulary. It's all our positive numbers. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, right? We'll put a dot, dot, dot. Some people include zero as an integer. Some people don't. It just depends on, you know, what they like, all right? So um, the integers is not just the positive numbers, all right? We also have our negative numbers, okay? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So that's the integers. I like to use a notation. I use funky I. This is set notation. Dot, 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 negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, dot, 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 and then curly bracket. This is a set. All right. So the integers is your positives and your negatives and your zero. There's another set of numbers called the natural numbers. All right. Natural numbers. I use funky looking in. The natural numbers is only the positives. So we start off with the natural numbers. Again, a long time ago in history, we had one, two, and many. Right? So that's where we started. One, two, many. And again, some cultures, that's all they have. Then eventually we extended that uh, to one, two, three, four. All right, and then we continue to evolve and um, we started getting uh, ratios. So from there we got to really, we looked at like one half, and three fourths, and five sixths, and we applied meaning to those ideas, these ratios. Uh, at some point, uh, some point we ended up getting our negatives. We're like, ah, we can have negative numbers. And then eventually we got the zero, which took quite a while. And um, so whenever you go from the integers to extend that, we look at ratios. So I use, this, these are called rational numbers. They're ratios. I use a funky looking Q. So it's all the numbers that's an integer over an integer. So, uh, you know, one half, negative three fourths, anything like that. One way of saying that is a number over a number where those numbers are elements of the set of integers. So that's just notation to how we write it down. To say it in English takes a while. It's a number over a number where those numbers are uh, integers. So we said the integers is this set of numbers. And then I defined the rational numbers as to be any number over a number. I just use the letters N and M. I could have used A and B or C and D. They're just names. Could have called them Barbara and Joy. And then I said, these names are numbers that are elements. It's a funny looking E, element of this set, then the integers. So that's just some fun notation here. So. So we, we use negative numbers. So they say here on a winter day in Buffalo, the low temperature was three degrees below zero or negative three degrees. The golfer score in the US Open was seven below par or negative seven. Carmen is $128 overdrawn on her checking account. Her balance is negative 128. So these are all negative numbers and they lie left to the zero. So we have this number line, right? We like to take this line we go boom there's a our number line so any number there's a point on this line so like one half would be right here which is the same as 0.5 right so y'all should be fairly 
familiar with the idea of a number line. What's really cool is as you extend our number set, see we have our ratios here. I said it's an integer over an integer. Well, so we go natural numbers, zero, one, two, and then we go up to the integers where we throw in the negatives. Let me do the dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna do this. Dot, 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 negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, dot, dot, dot. All right, and then we extend to the rational numbers, which we use a Q here. So again, this was any two numbers, N and M, an N over an M, where N and M are integers or ratios, ratios of whole numbers. All right, then we extended this to the real numbers. This is all the decimals, all right? So consider the number one is really 1.000000. 000. Put a bar over the zero to say that it goes on forever, right? So the number one, it's a natural number. It's also an integer. It's also a, uh, these are rationals. All right, so integers, I should tell you what these are, integers, natural numbers, all right? So the rationals are all the ratios, but it turns out there's numbers that aren't, uh, can't be written as a ratio, like the square root of two, all right? If we plug that into our calculator, let's see if I can find my calculator, two, and then I square root it, boom. This is approximately equal to 1.414. Now I did the squiggly equals because the square root of two is not exactly equal to this. It, it goes on and on, two, one, three, five, six, all right? The square root of two is a single number, but to write it down, you have to have an infinite number of digits because it goes on forever and ever and ever without a pattern, all right? Think of one third, it is 0.333. We can put this line over the three. So that says that we just repeat the three over and over and over again infinitely. So even though one third here has an infinite number of decimals, we can use a finite number of symbols to write it down. 0.3, I just put this bar over the three because that's the pattern. If I had something that was 0.68 or uh, uh, 67, and that repeat, if both of those numbers, if it was if it was this, I could write it like that. All right. These uh, when we go to the real numbers, there's still numbers that fit on this uh, number line up here. So here's 0.5. It's a rational number. It's also a real number. This is called our real number line. All right, so the square root of two being 1.4 something, that would be somewhere around here. I'd put square root of two. It's called an irrational number. Irrational. So it cannot be written as a ratio, as a, ratio, as a rational number. It's an irrational number, all right? It, this one single number actually requires an infinite amount of information to store. So you can see the dilemma in computer science. Computer science is all computing with numbers and all that. Well, this single number would take an infinite number of hard drives just to store that one number. So the whole art of computer science, the computers doing anything at all without crashing is approximating and rounding and getting enough decimals and saying, okay, well, pi is three point one and that's close enough because again a single number takes an infinite amount of information to store so if you take the rationals and you add to them the irrationals you put those together you get the real number line so the real numbers what we call real numbers all fit on this line all in order all right 
the thing is, is like, hey, here's the number four, right? What's the next real number? Well, what if I said, oh, here's 4.1. And I said, well, uh, 4.1, that's not the next number. What about 4.01? That's closer to four, right? And somebody could say, well, what about 4.00001? That's even closer to four. So what is the actual next number after four, the next real number? No matter what number you pick, there's still a number that's closer to four than the one you picked. So no matter what number you pick, there's actually between four and 4.0001, there's an uncountably infinite number of numbers between four and this. No matter what number you pick, no matter how close it is to the number four, there's still an uncountably infinite number of numbers between the number you picked and the number four. So our real number line is what we call dense. Think about it is think about your natural numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five. There's an infinite number of them, right? But we call that type of infinity, that's called countably infinite countably infinite because you could if you had an infinite amount of time you could count them all one two three four five six and so on the real numbers however pick a number you can't get you can't even find the next one because whichever one you pick there's still an infinite number of numbers between it so it, this thing is what we call uncountably infinite so if you want to know more about the different kinds of infinities, just uh, uh, Google the difference between countable and uncountably infinite, and you'll get some real simple uh, things that they, line, that they they do. Basically, if you have a set of things to figure out how infinite they are, you just put them in a chart. So if you can make a one-to-one -one correspondence between the natural numbers and whatever you're looking at, then you know they're countable. So um, that's where this class will end, real numbers. What's really cool though, is we have imaginary numbers. We use the, the letter I to represent the square root of minus one, which is a strange idea because square root is the opposite of squaring. So if you square something, uh, two, I don't wanna use two, let's say three squared, that means three times three, which is nine. Uh, four squared, to square something means multiply it by itself, okay? The square root is the opposite of squaring. So the square root of nine would be three because three times three is nine. The square root of 16 would be four because uh, four times four is 16. This square root is actually an exponent. We just get tired of writing this one half as an exponent. So we have this other symbol, the square root symbol. All right, uh, we'll get into that later. But the point is, is this square root thing, it's great for positive numbers, but what would the square root of negative four be? We need two numbers that multiply to give us a negative number. The thing is, is negative two times negative two is positive four. If you have a negative times a negative, you always get a positive. So a square root of a negative number doesn't make any sense, right? There's no two numbers you can multiply together that's gonna give you a negative number because a negative times a negative is a positive. Yet when we start solving equations, we keep ending up with the square roots of negative numbers as answers to our equations. So even though our equations only have real numbers in them, so we have to extend our uh, numbers. So yeah, you have a number line here, right? But it turns out that we, have a, we actually have a number plane. So here's your real numbers. One, two, three, negative one, negative two. And of course, all the fractions and such. So what we do is we take this i, again, the square root of minus one, and we have minus i. 
We have minus 2i. We have positive 2i. And it goes all the it goes up and down. So let's say here's 4 and here's i. This number right here in our number plane would be 4 plus i. Because here's i, there's 4. So this number here, this would be negative 2 plus 2i. These are known as complex numbers. All right. The ones that just have i's, those are called imaginary numbers. Ima imaginary numbers are like i, 3i, 6i. Anything times i, I'll call it ni, or n is a number. Those are imaginary numbers. Again, they, we call them imaginary because they have the square root of a negative. The thing is, is they're not actually imaginary. They are just as real as our real numbers. It's just that the word real had already been taken. And when they first discovered these, they thought they were imaginary. But it turns out that these numbers have real world representations and are useful in the real world. Okay. I didn't tell you why. Uh, about the irrationals, like square root of two, wherever it went, the one, the numbers that you can't write as a ratio of a whole number to a whole number, like two thirds, three fourths, the square root of two here, it was called irrational because back in the day of Pythagoras, um, it was thought that those numbers did not exist. And if you thought they did, then you were an irrational person. So Pythagoras was, a uh, a mathematician and he was the head of his own religion, the Pythagoreans. So Pythagoras, Pythagoras, hopefully I spelled that right. All right, and Pythagoreans. All right, all is number was their uh, mantra, okay? And he, he discovered the Pythagorean theorem that tells you if you have a triangle with a 90 degree in it, all right, if this is A and this is B, then this is C. He said A squared plus B squared equals C squared. He came up with the Pythagorean theorem, and he also discovered notes. So all of our music that we have notes, what the concept of a note is, he's the one who figured all that out. So we can owe all of our music to him and the basics of most mathematics. But they did not believe in irrational numbers. If there was something you could build and measure, the length had to be a ratio of whole numbers. Well, the problem was, was somebody came along and he said, okay, if this is length one and this is length one, what is this length? Well, by by the Pythagorean theorem, one squared, c squared should be one squared plus one squared, right? Well, that's two. So if c squared is equal to two, then c had to be the square root of two, right? So this length here, the most simplest triangle and the Pythagorean theorem says it's the square root of two. Well, the Pythagoreans always said, well, the, the square root of two has to be it's some number over some number because all numbers are ratios. Well, then this smart guy came along and he said, oh, he did a proof by uh, contradiction. He said, well, if, um, if this is a whole number over a whole number, he used logic and he said, well, then this other thing must be true. And if that's true, then this other thing must be true. And if that's true, then this other thing must be true. But this last thing was something that we all know is not true. So he started with the assumption that this is a rational number. And he showed that that showed a contradiction. He said, if you assume this to be true, an outcome of that is something that we know is not true. This thing says it's true. So he used a proof by contradiction to prove that this was an irrational number. So they took him out to sea and they drowned him. And that's your first uh, mathematical martyr. Because once you've built it into a religion, your religion can't be wrong. So you just kill anybody that uh, proves you otherwise.
So there's a lot of myths and legend and lore around Pythagoras. He was a real person and he did a lot of amazing stuff, but you know, it was over 2000 years ago. So there's all kinds of legends and, you know, crazy things. Um, you know, what, part of the, the lore is he had a, uh, this deep hate towards beans and uh, flagellants. And he apparently when he died, it was an army caught him in a bean field. And he said, I'd rather die than uh, run through this bean field because he hated beans and farts that much something like that roughly do some googling and you'll find other versions of it but what what's actual truth or not we don't know so anyhow that was your irrational numbers once they found irrational numbers they combined them with the rationals and that's what made our real numbers so that's what's real well then we find these imaginary numbers we call them imaginary because we didn't know they had any use but we found out that they are useful because they're solutions to our equations. And so we combine them with our real numbers. So here's a real number. Here's an imaginary number. When you put them together, you have a real number plus an imaginary number. This is a complex number. So you can add them, multiply them and all that. So really you don't have a number line, you have a number plane. But for this class, we're gonna stick with the number line. All right, but if you get interested in this stuff, you can look at the number plane, all right, with imaginary numbers. Um, it turns out you can continue to extend that, uh, not just I, you can have an I, J, K. So we actually have like a number, like four dimensional number uh, space, if you want to go that far. It's all useful in math and physics, but I hope I didn't overwhelm you with too much information. Uh, None of that's going to be on a test or your homework or anything. I'm just trying to keep this interesting. All right. We're concerned about our real number line. For right now, we're only concerned about these numbers we wrote down, the integers. That's the whole point. Your negatives, your positives, whole numbers. Uh, and let's see here, close this, don't save, go back, screenshot, rectangular snip. Snapshot. There we go. So some examples here. Uh, an integer that denotes each number. Nitro, liquid nitrogen freezes at 346 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Below zero. So that's a negative 346 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Why do we put degrees Fahrenheit? So we know it's a temperature and what uh, format, you know? That's not the same as degrees Celsius, right? That's different. Or degrees Kelvin. Actually, they don't even say degrees. They just say Kelvin. So that's another uh, temperature. What if they just said negative 346 degrees? That's not even a temperature, that's an angle. Is an, dang it, is an angle, right? You have to write your units. Always write units, okay? Without the, the, the units are what guide us, right? When we're doing math and stuff. Because if you're doing a calculation and you're looking for dollars and you end up with feet, you know you did something wrong in your calculation, right? So you always write your units. That's the most important thing. The units guide you, all right? Uh, this is the importance of units. All right, the shoreline of the Dead Sea on the border of Israel and Jordan is the lowest land area on Earth. It is 1,300 feet below sea level. So 
1,300 feet below sea level. This is feet here, right? It would be a negative. Hold on a second. What's up, Pop? All right, I'll be teaching until about 4.30. Okay, I'll come over when I'm done. Thank you. That was my dad. He brought me my shoes I ordered. Got some new Nikes. My dog chewed up my old ones. Alex. <laughs> Good thing my dog is too well trained. She tried to do that. Took her several times, but she learned. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jenna's 10 year old daughter weighs 14 pounds more than the average child her age. What do they want us to write? Write an integer. All right. So we say 14 pounds. Here, I'm going to use an L instead of that one because what is that? That's 141B, isn't it? No, that's not what I want. I want pounds. So I don't know why they're getting rid of cursive in school. In order to do math or physics, you have to be able to write the letter X like 17 different ways. You know, it's important. So yeah, that right there, that looks like 141B to me with a fun, funny space. So I write things very concise. So 14 pounds, uh, more than the average. So plus whatever the average is. I wonder what they want you to write. Let's see what the book says here. I wonder if it does something. Oh, they just say 14 pounds. Okay. Skill practice. Okay, let's do a screenshot. The snipping tool is useful, but it's kind of slow. But we'll make do with it. All right, we want a rectangular stuff. Let's see. Hey, uh, do y'all need a break? It's 3 30. We've been going at this for a while. Or we can get out early today. You know, it's up to y'all. Anybody opposed to, to getting out early instead of taking a break? If you can go another 30 minutes. I'm not. I like getting out early. I got to go to work anyways. Okay. I agree with getting out early as well. <laughs> okay. We'll do that then. Uh, I'm not. Need a break? You can go ahead and take a break if you need to. We're only going to cover a little bit in ten minutes, anyway. So if you need to step away, I, I'm not. I, I'm not watching you. Yeah, I need to take a break. My my brain already hit the high peak. All right. Well, let's. When it hits the high peak. Yeah, let's take a five minute. I say. That way, we we'll get a break and we can uh, still finish a little early. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll come back five minutes at 3.33. Yeah, when I was, uh, when I started teaching, I was also a student and I told myself I would never teach unless I was also a student. And that lasted about eight years at UTSA. Now it's like, I'm trying to get back into school. I feel guilty giving homework and stuff you know, when I'm the teacher, you know, but if I finish teaching class and then I walk across the hallway and I have to learn quantum mechanics, you know, it's hard as hell, you know, so it keeps, you know, kept me with perspective, you know, what my students are dealing with, you know, it's not the same math, but it's just as hard no matter where you're at, you know, so if you're just learning how to add numbers, it seems hard, right? And they say, well, you're good at math. It's like the math I'm having to do is just as hard because you're always at your own boundary, you know? I know that people would say that and like, it's just numbers and letters, that's all. Yeah, you just, the, the letters are the confusing part. Yeah. Take those away and it's you all numbers. Any letters you want, you know? The letters you see are just the ones that we kind of like to use, but just like a map has a legend, there's symbols and stuff, and then they tell you in the legend, well, this symbol means this, and this symbol means that. It's the same thing in math. Again, I don't have to use X or A and B. I could use a rainbow and a unicorn, you know? You, you know, 
math yeah. math is more poetry than anything else once you start recognizing that the symbols have meanings you know it's not just symbol manipulation there's a reason why you do the particular manipulation and why you get the answers you do and why that matches up with the real world that, that's why like when i do my homework like if i do homework i will i will take away the letters the, the variables and then i will just focus on the numbers so that i can yeah. be less confused see that like we we do things like this we say um one plus one is two right we might say two plus four is six right um we might say three plus seven point five is ten point five right well there's an infinite number of things we can write like this we could just say a plus b equals c so what this represents is all possible things you could write down like that. That's why we throw those letters in there. It's a level of abstraction, but you're not actually let adding letters, right? This A just represents any number. The B represents any number and the C rep represents any number. So you might have things like two plus X equals three. Obviously X has to be one because two plus one is three, right? So we use X's. The problem is, is all through elementary school, they told us this is six, right? They said, this is multiplication, right? So we all get this symbol in our head, that's multiplication, right? And then you go into algebra and they start using it as a letter. They use it as something totally different. And a lot of people never make that distinction. And that's where most people get lost in math. After, after you go to algebra, you never ever use an X for multiplication ever. You just write two times three, that's six. That's two times three, or you write two times three. You never use an X, you know, except for when you're a little kid and then you get to algebra and they're saying X is a, this name for a number, right? So that's the first most important distinction that you'll need to know to advance in math is, right? When you're little, they use X for multiplication. After that, when they use X, they're not meaning multiplication at all. It's totally different. They're using it as a variable. This is an unknown number. For this statement to be true, for two plus X to be equal to three, the only way it's true is if X equals one, okay? So this just, you know, I could have written two plus, you know, that's a rainbow in black and white, right? That means rainbow, rainbow has to equal one. I'll do this. Therefore, therefore, that's what that symbol means. Or if two plus rainbow equals three, then rainbow equals one, right? All right, let's move on here. Um, write an integer that denotes each number. All right, the average temperature at the South Pole in July is 65 degrees Celsius below zero. So negative 65 degrees Celsius. When they say the South Pole, where do they mean? Like Antarctica. The South Pole is it's the next little bit. All right, so here's the Earth. So it's spinning, right? Right? So some da somewhere down here, is this the South Pole? Sure. Right? That's what where they mean, right? Well, the thing is, is like the Earth, it, it doesn't spin perfectly, right? Sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's like this, right? It kind of wobbles, right? As it goes around the sun, sometimes it's like that, but over here, it might be like that as it goes around the sun, right? So there's a wobble there, which is interesting. And then you talk about, that. You talk about that. Uh, the South Pole uh, never moves, but the North Pole does. 
<laughs> well, it's all about how you define it, right? Uh, so it's going to be the, the same position on the Earth, you know, the North and South Pole. It's wherever this axis comes out, right? Um, but your magnetic poles change, right? The magnetic North and the magnetic South Pole aren't the same as the geographical North and South. The magnetic poles wander all around. So uh, every year, the, the magnetic North Pole moves, you know, a few hundred miles because of the all the uh, liquid metal inside the Earth, right? It's all iron, and the heavier the metal, the further it sinks. So the center of the Earth would be like all platinum or uranium or whatever is the heaviest, right? And as you go out, you get shells. It would go from there to gold, to silver, and then to iron, depending on how, which 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 one's heaviest, you know. All right, so Sylvia's checking account is overdrawn. Uh oh, by 156 bucks. So she's at negative. Negative 150. That's right. All right, I like to write my one like that instead of that, so I don't. So I know it's a one and not an L. All right. I tried that once. My grandmother flipped out. Hmm. I write my sevens like I go. I write it like a normal seven, then I put a line through. Like that. <laughs> All right. I yeah. don't. I don't like writing. You know, sometimes I will write it like this. Sometimes like that. It just depends on the style I'm working with. But if it's needed to differentiate from some other number or symbol, I'll throw it in there because that's obviously a seven, right? This, you know, it looks kind of like a backward C, you know? It just depends on what's around it as to how I'll write a particular number. Because it sucks if you come up with this amazing idea and the only way that you can express it to the world for them to benefit from it is through mathematics. And then you get it all out there. You've written a hundred pages of really great stuff that's going to change the world, but nobody can understand it because they can't tell the difference between an O and a zero. And then your theory dies with you. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll move on. I could go on and on and on about that. All right, the price of a new car is $2,000 more than it was a year ago. I'm assuming they just mean 2000 instead of 2000 plus uh, I'll say, I got to make up some notation. What does it mean to say the price a year ago? I'm going to put P as a function of time at negative one, where this means price. This would be P of T as a function of time and time being negative one year. So that's a notation I just made up. So P is price. It's a function of time. And the negative one means year ago. So the time at negative one. Of course, all they want is this. OK, they just mean 2000. The price of the car is 2000 more than it was a year ago. They don't care about any of this. The price of a new car is 2000. OK, 2000 bucks. All right, I'm throwing in all this notation and stuff just so that you can see that math is more poetry and art you can write anything you want to say any way you want to say it as long as you make it clear and concise or somebody else can comprehend the idea okay right, let's see snipping tool no Snipping tool. I wish they'd let us download the book as a PDF and make things a lot smoother. There we go. Locate each number on the number line. All right, negative four. Well, here's zero. One, two, three. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Boom. Where's negative seven? Oh, dang it. Well, negative five, negative six, negative seven. It's right there. 
All right, where is zero? Right in the middle. Boom. Where is two? Zero, one, two. Boom, right here. Right, easy stuff, easy peasy. No, it's still pretty scary. <laughs> Don't let the numbers scare you. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I know y'all hate math, but just remember math loves you. I love math. <laughs> math will let you understand the deepest mysteries in the universe. It's the second most thing I love besides uh, music. Oh, that's great. I actually write my own songs and sing them when I can. That's great. Uh, I'm hoping to teach my daughter music. It's something I didn't get into. I wish I had. Later on, I helped manage a musician friend of mine. Uh, got him introduced to the, the iPhone and the the musical apps you can do on that for recording and manipulating music. Um, the, the fun thing is when people ask me, I always tell them, listen to your heart because the heart, it's a songwriter. You, this is just a co-help. Yeah. And listen to Pythagoras because he discovered what notes are. <laughs> so if you're playing stuff that ain't notes, it doesn't sound right. The reason why we have notes has to do with uh, ratios. So let's say here's your string and it vibrates. So it's vibrating up and down. That would be a note if you get that vibration. If you get this, divide it in half. So it's vibrating like that and like that. That's a different note, all right? So that's that would be a half, right? So you get a whole note right in the middle. That would be your half, right? Uh, Let's put this on another page and we'll come back. All right, and then you have that one. That's your uh, thirds, you know, and you got your fourths. That sucks, let's try that again. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so when this, the string is vibrating like that, that's what gives you notes. It's all about ratios. Uh, if you get something that's, you know, like, like that, you know, the, the wavelength of the vibration doesn't fill into the, uh, the, the full length of the string, right? It's all about the ratios. These are where your notes come from. And he figured that out. Those are the ones that sound good. The other ones sound ugly, which is amazing that you can program emotion using math through music. All right, locate each number on the number line. A negative five, boom. That's where that is. Negative one, boom. And a four, boom. As with whole numbers, the order between two integers can be determined using the number line. So which one's bigger than the other? So here's our... Uh, greater than and less than symbols, greater than and less than symbols, symbols. So here's something else you need to know. This and this. So which one is which? So, uh, this, this. So let's see, two is less than three. Four is greater than five. Six is greater than four. Uh, what, how do we know which one of these to use? Just look at your number line. Look at the arrow we put on the ends. See the arrows? All right, that's less than. It's the one that's pointing to the, to the negative numbers. When you go to the left, the numbers get smaller, right? This one greater than, if you go to the right, the numbers get bigger. So if you don't remember which one's which, just think about your number line. Two is less than three, you see that? It's the same thing right here. Two is less than three, it's to the left of three on the number line. 
four is greater than five. That's totally wrong. Four is not greater than five. Four is greater than one. How's that? <laughs> so because four is greater than one, we use the greater than symbol, which is the arrow that points to the right. This is saying four is to the right of one on our number line. Six is greater than four. When I was a little kid, they taught us something about alligators. So memorize this. Uh, they, I remember that. Yeah, they taught us. So like four greater than one. They said the little one eats the bigger one. So it's like, it's like, well, that doesn't make any damn sense. The little one eats. The, that's what they used to teach us this. And this is why I teach math is because these things just piss me off. Why did they do that to us? The little one eats the big one. That's not how it works in nature. All you have to do is look at the number line. It's right here. Here's the symbols. They're at the end of the number line. The one that points to the right is greater. The one that points to the left is less. Four is bigger than one. Four, think of it as an arrow, is to the right of the number one on the number line. So that's a much better way to, to remember it. Think of your number line and the arrows at the end of it, okay? To hell with alligators or whatever they were thinking. That's just stupid. Unless, of course, it works for you. If it works for you, then it's wonderful. Who am I to judge, right? Okay. There's Alex. Okay, now I need to scroll up. Uh, snipping tool, close. Snipping tool, rectangle. Paste. Okay, as with whole numbers, the order, all right, we already looked at this. So less than, here, let me use a red star. All right, I'll say, just look at number line. Right here. All right, less than points to the left. Dang it. Greater than points to the right. Number. Just think about this and this. There we go. For those couple of students that didn't make it today, that'll be watching the video on YouTube and reading the notes, because you know they're going to be studious and do that, right? Alex. Scroll down, let's do example three. We don't want that, we want this. Rectangular snip. My laptop is about 15 years old, but it still does everything I need it to do. All right, example three, let's make it a little bigger. Black ink. Use the number line from example two to fill in the blank. Okay, there's example two. Example two. Oh, no, nah, we're not gonna do that. All right, which is bigger? Uh, what do we wanna put in here? Negative seven. Less than. Right over here is negative seven, right? And here is zero, here's negative four, right? Negative seven is to the left of negative four. Negative seven, although seven is bigger than four, 
we're talking about negatives here, right? And negative seven dollars is a bigger debt than a negative four dollars. So negative seven is less than negative four. All right. Uh, zero and negative four. Plus seven. Negative four. That's right. Negative four. If you if you broke even, you know you don't owe anybody anything. But you got a negative four. All right. So zero is to the right of negative four on the number line. All right. So zero is bigger than negative four. Zero is bigger than negative four. Likewise, negative four is less than zero. Okay. Two and negative seven. Well, two is a positive number. Negative Three. seven is negative, right? So here's zero, two, negative seven. So two is to the right of negative seven. Two is bigger than negative seven. Does that make sense? All right. Back to Alex. Okay, close that. Do our skill practice here. Pace. All right, same thing here. There's zero. There's a negative three. Here's a negative eight. All right, the negative three is to the right of negative than. so negative three is greater than negative eight here we have negative three again and then a positive eight negative three is to the left of eight because negative three is less than eight now we got a zero and a negative 11 all right zero is to the right of negative 11 okay so zero is greater than negative 11 Likewise, negative 11 is less than zero. Okay. All right, now that we've done a portion of the section here. So now we 2.0. Uh, trying to figure out what section we just covered. 2.1. So where does 2.2 .2 start? So we just covered 2.1. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, look, they have a video here. I, I think we're gonna end for today. Um, we'll pick up next time. I just wanna figure out where I'm picking up next time, you know? So if I scroll down, how do I go to the next page? How is this all one big page? Uh, okay, so that whole page is section 2.1, I guess. And then there's a bunch of homework. I'm guessing these are the homework problems that are in Alex, okay. And if I go to the next page, 2.2. So that's kind of cool. Each page is a whole section, basically. All right, well, we'll come back uh, Thursday and we will do, we'll start off right here at two absolute value. So what do we want to do now is exam number one. All right, these lecture notes after class, I'm gonna post them in Canvas. So if you ever miss class, you don't know what the quiz or exam is, just look at the lecture notes. Then you know what the quiz and exam is and you could still get it done by midnight, okay? So tell me something interesting. Let's see, something you find interesting about math, all right? So that's your, uh, your exam for the day. Uh, you'll upload it into Canvas the same way you did with uh, 
uh, your quiz. Get it in before midnight. All right. And you're getting about 30 minutes early, but I'm kind of treating this like class time, like you'd have 30 minutes to do this. Okay. But again, you have till midnight to, uh, to upload it. How Are long we, do you want this response? As long as you want it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, any questions? All right. Um, I tried logging into Alex and it said that it wasn't uploaded yet. So that's weird. I have it set up. Maybe I have to pair it before y'all can. I don't know. I, just on my phone. So I don't know if it's different, like on my computer. Did you go to assignments? That's how I found it. It's in assignments? Yeah, yeah. it's in assignments. And you'll see 2.1 and 2.2. .2. Okay, cool. I didn't even know that was there. Yeah, you have to go to the where it says like Alex. Mm -hmm. So y'all have this shows up on y'all's assignments, the Alex stuff? Yeah, on my phone it did. All right, cool. Because on my computer it didn't. Yeah, it's not showing up here on mine. You see, and on my phone, I go to assignments and it only and it doesn't show up on assignments, but it shows up on modules. Oh, yeah, in modules is where Alex yeah. is on the computer. Yeah. So, yeah, try to get started on that homework in Alex so that next time we can compare notes and see if everybody could actually access it. Those of us who could can help the, those who are having difficulty. So uh, try to get started on Alex homework. 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 Go look in modules in Canvas. Canvas. There. All right, any questions before we uh, depart today? Do you know where I can find the lectures again, please? The, the uh, after class, I'm going to upload this video to YouTube and um, I'll update the syllabus. So there'll be a link uh, there in the syllabus. Uh, Thank you so much because I had a hard time with my computer and I missed just about everything. No, uh, it's okay. Like right here in uh, YouTube and notes, uh, I'll, I'll highlight, I'll make this YouTube here a link and it'll be a playlist to all the lecture videos. And the notes are going to be here in under files. You can go here and uh, it'll be a PDF so you can read the notes. I'm not sure how much sense they'll make. Thank you. So I'll do that right after class. It'll take a couple hours to get the video up, but... I'll get it up there as soon as it's done. Thank you very much. Sure thing. All right, any other questions, y'all? No, sir, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Sure thing. All right, I'll see y'all next time. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.